desperate for drivers, the serious changes to your child's school schedule this year for SLPS. Justice for Damian Baker. No one expected my 25 year old son to be gunned down in downtown St. Louis. How his mother is using his memory to change the lives of St. Louis youth as the search to catch his killer continues. A weather impact alert for Wednesday and Thursday. We're tracking storms and some could be severe. We'll talk about the timing and the threat coming up. A fear of fireworks can make the 4th of July hard for your pet. Three ways to keep them safe this Independence Day. This is Today in St. Louis, focused on you. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. It is July the 2nd. I'm Rennie Knott. I'm Michelle Lee. Great to see you this morning. You know what? We've been talking about weather impact today. Mm -hmm. It is going to be a little bit warm again. A lot of bit warm. A lot, a a lot, lot of, of bit, bit warm. warm. <laughs> Let's get over to Anthony Slaughter, keeping an eye on the weather for us. Good morning, Anthony. Hey, good morning. Yeah, yesterday we hit 80 degrees. Today we'll be up to 95. So that gives you an idea of just how much warmer we'll be. In fact, by lunchtime, we'll already be near 80. And it is going to be a little bit more humid this afternoon as storms start to fire up to our north. But no storms today. Those will move in first thing for tomorrow. It's 69 at Lambert, 61 over in Flora. Chesterfield, you're at 60, along with our friends in Farmington. 60 degrees there. Numbers again warmer today. In fact, downright hot. We're headed up near 90 in Perryville, 92 in Belleville, and 95 here in St. Louis. We will talk about our next weather impact alert for tomorrow. That's coming up in the full forecast. For now, let's say good morning to Paul Cook and track our traffic. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Anthony. Oh, yes, we definitely have an incident that could impact your morning commute if you're in St. Charles. This one's just a little bit south of Discovery Elementary School. We're talking about 370 at 94. We're also just on the other side, the west side of the Missouri River here, and that vehicle that you're looking at right there was going the wrong way in the median. That doesn't mean they were driving the wrong way. It was an incident and it flipped them right around. So you do have emergency vehicles in that area of St. Charles. Let me show you how it looks here on our big map, and I think we can kind of uh, well locate it a little bit so you can avoid it in St. Charles here, 370 at 94, and then maybe you're waiting on it, the big map. Here it is. This is all the well, most of the various routes here. You're also moving very nicely in Jefferson County right now. We'll have your next take of traffic in just a few minutes. Right now, we're following breaking news this morning. There has been more violence impacting our young people, this time in North St. Louis County. We know that a teenager has been shot in Spanish Lake and our Sydney Stallworth is live outside the North County Police Precinct in Sydney within the last hour. What have you learned about this young victim in this shooting? Well, Michelle Rennie, our newsroom has confirmed with St. Louis County Police. A 15 year old girl was shot about five hours ago and it all happened just less than five minutes away from where we are now at the North County Precinct. Now, as police work right now to learn what led up to this shooting, I can tell you that this teenage girl is in the hospital as we speak, but we don't have any information on her condition as of right now. Now, our crew was on the scene of this shooting shortly after it happened just before one o'clock this morning. Here's where those shots were fired. This is on Cabrillo Drive across the railroad tracks from Spanish Lake. This is a residential area. Take a look at what the scene looked like just after 1 30 this morning. Our news crew on the scene did notice investigators with the St. Louis County Crime Lab taking some photos of the outside of a home there. And one of our photographers also noticed several neighbors in the area where the shooting happened coming out of their homes as police were working to collect evidence. Now our five on your side newsroom does track the number of shootings in our area and according to our newsroom data, this is at least the 21st minor shot in the St. Louis County area. Now we are continuing to ask police questions this morning, pressing for those answers as we work to learn more about any information on any potential suspects in the condition of this 15 year old girl as she was shot. We will of course bring you any updates on air and online on KSDK.com. That's the very latest of what we know here in North County. I'm Sydney Stallworth five on your side. Thank you, Sydney. Right now, an update to a story that we've been following all morning here on Today in St. Louis. One person is dead after a crash and a car fire at Denny Station Road and Jenny's Crossing. That's just off of I-70 near the St. Louis City County border. Now, the first calls for the crash came in around midnight. Our crew on the scene saw this burnt out car and first responders 
administering CPR to one person for multiple minutes. Right now, our newsroom is working to learn if anyone else was in that car and what caused the crash. I know that they understaff, I get it, but like again, it's frustrating for you to know that your kid does not have a secure way home when you're relying on that. Right now, the pressure is on for St. Louis Public Schools to create a consistent transportation system for their students before classes start just next month. Now, school leaders are considering serious changes this morning, and our Diamond Palmer is joining us live from district headquarters with really what's at stake, Diamond. Well, Michelle and Rennie, we've been following this issue for months and months, and the district says that they have chronic bus absenteeism due to the bus driver shortage. So tonight's meeting will take place just behind me at the central office, and it will be a final proposal and presentation about ways to solve this transportation issue. Like I said, this issue has been persisting for months. We've talked to many families who are really upset about the lack of solutions, but now the district says they are trying to put solutions in place to help those families. So let's get right to the solutions on your screen and talk about those. So those include uh, serious changes coming for the school year. First, the school would change its start and end time to create three tiers 65 minutes apart. They also want to team up with Metro Bus to help get high schoolers to class. And the district is looking to reduce about 70 bus routes. They say that will actually help and not harm this problem. So for months, the district officials have told five on your side families whose children rode school buses. They experienced chronic bus absenteeism. There were just simply too many routes and not enough bus drivers to cover the routes. In late March, Missouri Central Bus Company chose to terminate the contract with the district as soon as July 12th, which is just in a couple of days. Now, I sat down with the district superintendent in May, and this is what she told me back then about the issues. Our long term solution is to have a transportation um, situation that works, a, a system that works for students, um, that we move and have two contract providers so that we don't have to put sort of the fate of our entire system into one um, around that. I think it's good sometimes to have two providers. It creates a little internal competition, um, but also it helps us to be able to serve, serve families in a better way. So tonight's meeting will begin at 630 here at the central office and it is open to the public. The district says this meeting was actually supposed to take place a week from now, but it was moved up because they urgently want to find a solution for families ahead of the new school year. But coming up in the next half hour, we'll talk about just why the school district says one of the main solutions to help this problem will be changing start and end school times. Reporting in St. Louis, Diamond Palmer, five on your side. Every day is what I strive for that, right? Um, I just pull on this little energy and say, okay, mama needs some help. Two years after her son's murder, one St. Louis mom is pushing for answers and for change. How is she solidifying his legacy this morning? Heard in the backyard, today's forecast is a lot hotter. We'll be in the 90s this afternoon, mostly sunny and a little bit more humid, but today is dry. Storms develop tomorrow. We did it. We did it! <laughs> oh my Heyday God, for St. Louis's very own Jason Tatum, the record-setting deal that he is set to sign.